Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to day two. Wow, responsive audience. Cool. Um, first presentation this morning in this track is Hey Fido, Meet Paskey. Before I introduce uh, two speakers, this is a really interesting topic. A lot of people have a lot of questions about it. Um, we've got a few Paskey presentations, hoping they'll answer um, most of your questions. Uh, we will try and take questions at the end, depending on how much time we have, but they are short. So I do need to warn you, we may not have a huge amount of time. Take a really good look at these faces so that you can find them later in the audience. And so our presenters for this morning are uh, both from Microsoft. That's not a bad thing. Um, we have Scott Bingham. <laughs> I'm an ex-Microsoftie. Yeah, I can, I, to be clear, I used to be part of that cabal uh, company. Um, and then we have Tim uh, Kapaski, I mean Capelli, from uh, Microsoft as well. So not sure who's speaking first. Go ahead, gentlemen. Good luck. David, you can never escape Microsoft. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, what we're going to talk about today, this is not quite a 101, but it's, it's meant to be kind of an introduction uh, and some level setting on Paskey. There's a bunch of other sessions actually right after this, which will go deeper on uh, individual pieces. And we're going to talk about what is a Paskey, right? That's been kind of an interesting debate over like, how do you even define this thing? So we hope to clarify that today. We'll talk about the security spectrum um, of where Paskeys fall in kind of the existing uh, authenticators and credentials that we have today. Uh, we'll jump into the user experience tweaks and um, high value and consumer and enterprise. How do we actually address those use cases with you know, the, this idea that you know, the credential is synced across devices? How do we actually address those for those uh, individual um, use cases? So I'm going to hand it to Scott to kick us off with what is a passkey. So let's get right into it. What is a passkey? And to truly understand the implication um, and the importance of what a passkey is, we need to take a step back and look at some of the adoption obstacles that uh, FIDO faces today. So first, with roaming authenticators, they have a cost, which immediately um, introduces a barrier uh, for adoption. And because that credential is bound to a single device, the answer for, well, how, what happens if I lose that, creden or that, that authenticator is, well, you have to have another authenticator if you want to maintain that same security bar. So then we've doubled that cost. Um, roaming authenticators are also needed to securely bootstrap a platform authenticator. And consumers, there, there's some adoption challenges there. They're not really interested in buying them um, and for a couple different reasons. One might be a form factor, say that they have a, you know, one form factor on, uh, has a lightning port and it has USB-C. They have another device has NFC. Um, and it's a, it's a lot to ask them to carry around unique uh, or have a, one device that meets all those different criteria. Um, another thing that is like age, what do you do for children? Are you expecting them to carry around a security key when they want to authenticate on their, on their iPad or their tablet to you know, play Minecraft or whatever? Um, so we have some challenges there as well. And as our lives become increasingly digital, things start moving off of our keychains, things we actually physically carry around. Um, you know, car keys are moving to your, your phone, and uh, license, driver's license are moving to your phone. Uh, so it's another ask to have that uh, consumer walk around with a discrete piece of hardware. Finally, from a UX perspective, web authen and security key don't mean a lot to, to casual consumers. So we're stuck in kind of this um, scenario where we have passwords on the you know, far left of the spectrum very low security, and on the far right of the spectrum, we have um, like security keys uh, with some usability trade-offs. And where is that middle ground? And today, that middle ground is you know, passwords plus um, you know, SMS uh, or email or authentication apps. All these different things also have their trade-offs. Um, and those typically, those second channels are were never meant for authentication in the first place. Your phone number was not conceived for you to think about way to you know, prove your identity. And so where do we go from here? So a couple years ago, we went to the proverbial whiteboard, and we said, what, if, what do we need to do to replace passwords from the ground up? What needs to be true? First, any type of replacement has to be as easy to use or easier than, to use than a password. And that's a pretty high bar. Password has been a lot, around for a very long time um, with uh, system native password managers, third party password managers. The experience is actually pretty easy. Um, but if you're going to introduce something and it's not easier than this, you're immediately going to have adoption problems. The next is any sort of solution needs to be easy to recognize and understand. It has to be intuitive. It has to be instant. You can't expect our users to go and watch a cute 
uh, explainer video or read documentation about how to understand how to use uh, our, our new solution. Next, we have to leverage existing investments. We can't require users to go and purchase discrete hardware. Next, it has to be durable across device loss. It's just not acceptable at a, you're thinking at a global billions of users scale um, to have that credential tied to a single device that can't survive device loss or device upgrade. And finally, it needs to work at this global scale. We're not talking thousands, we're not talking millions, we're talking billions of users and replacing the password. So we came up with this concept called the passkey. And a passkey is a noun. Oh, I'll get back. A password replacement that is safer, easier, and faster to use. So a little housekeeping here. It is not a passkey with a capital P. It is not a passkey with a capital P or a K. There's no space in it. It's not a vendor-specific passkey. It is a passkey. I and, saw a tweet with a capital K. Delete it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have passwords, passkeys. You can use them interchangeably. It's, it's, it's a common noun. So let's take this um, into our friends and family edition. How do you explain a passkey to your friends and family? Well, it is a noun. You use your fingerprint, your face, to sign into apps and websites instead of a password. Obviously, there's some nuance there, but this is what people will understand. So let's move on to our tech savvy edition. Well, a passkey is a phishing resistant password replacement. It is a vital credential that is usable across all of your devices. Finally, we have the technologist edition. A FIDO2 discoverable credential which requires user verification and is backed up to survive device loss. And with that, I'll hand it back to Tim to go over where we see passkey in the security spectrum. Thanks, Scott. I'm going to go back to this, take pictures, because I, we're, we're, I think we're finally in agreement that this is the technology definition. It's uh, the definition that's on passkeys.dev. Um, and it is kind of, you know, I think everyone in this room is a technologist. So this is kind of how we, when we're talking about this for the rest of the presentation and these other sessions, uh, this is the definition we're talking about. Um, so on the security spectrum, right, the, the, we, we've started with passwords, right? If we, we kind of animate this out, let's say the left-hand side is zero, the right-hand side is 100. Those numbers are arbitrary. They're just designed to show small to large. Um, we started with passwords, right? Everyone was told that passwords are fishable, right? Passwords suck. We got to add something. So we added OTPs, right? That could be SMS OTP, email OTP. It could have been a magic link. Any of these user experiences are absolutely terrible and users hate, right? Then a few years later, well, probably a decade later, um, we had security keys and FIDO and platform authenticators all the way to the right. The most secure things on the market, right? Certified up to L3, FIPS compliant, all these great things um, that are great for organizations. Um, and so you can see we have a very off-balance solution set. So where we think passkeys fall is right in the middle. And you can think of the old, the old world, we'll say. I know that's a controversial statement, but security keys and platform authenticators that are hardware bound. You can think of those as single device passkeys, right? We need users who are using these devices and these credentials in an enterprise, even in their personal life, to know that that passkey can be used on a site where they see the word passkey or the icon, right? It's super important. The way we see this is just like the tap to pay icon that you see at checkout, that even my mother knows what that means. We need people to see the passkey icon or the passkey term and know that they can use their biometrics to sign in. Regardless of whether the credential is hardware bound or not, users should not and do not need to care about that. Right? So single device passkey is these hardware bound credentials that exist today. The actual passkey, just passkey by itself, we've kind of called a multi-device passkey. Right? And we will continue to just refer to those as passkeys. It is solely on here as multi-device passkey for clarity. Um, we, do, we will never present a user with the term multi-device passkey. Somewhere in the middle here, um, we've introduced the concept of a device public key. Right? So we have in the middle a syncable key. On the right, we have a hardware bound key. How do we get somewhere in the middle for some of these more advanced use cases? Right? So the device public key, we'll talk about a little bit more in a second, is the idea that you can actually have both a device bound key and a syncable key that is presented to the relying party for advanced scenarios. Um, what does all the user experience look like? Right, That's the most important point. As, as Scott mentioned, um, this has to be as easy as possible for users. It has to be as familiar as possible for users. Um, and really, the inspiration came from existing password manager UX. Right? How do I click into an email field and know that I have pass keys available? Right? One of the challenges today, if you've implemented WebAuthn and FIDO2, is you have to do all kinds of fun, not fun, stuff uh, with cookies and local storage to remember that this device has a credential 
and prompt the user with the correct flow, what if the platform could actually help out and the browser could help out and let the user know that they have a credential that's available, right? This is a similar challenge on feder the federated side, right? If you sign in with Google, sign in with Apple, sign in with LinkedIn, all those services, users often forget which one they use and they get into this loop of registering again and they end up with two accounts and all this mess, right? So it's a similar problem here is you don't want the user having to go through another creation flow or worse, falling back to a legacy credential that can be fished. So as part of this, right, it's a familiar experience for users because they have this drop down that automatically populates and shows all of the credentials they have available on that device, right? The nice thing is this will show both pass keys and single device pass keys, right? If you have older credentials that are hardware bound, they will also populate into this list. Um, it is dynamic, right? This is not something, um, all you have to do as a developer is add a flag to your username field and the platform and the, and the browser will take care of this for you. So it's super dynamic. It's not something you have to worry about rendering a specific UI for. It is privacy preserving. This is all rendered by the client, the browser, the operating system. So the relying party does not know anything about these credentials until the user does an active gesture and goes through the biometric prompt, right? which is huge. So there's no change in the privacy model for presenting this UI. And it's as I mentioned, it's a simple change for relying parties. If you little plug for passkeys.dev, you'll see you literally just add uh, one little attribute to the, the HTML tag for the username or password field. And if the browser and operating system support this, they will render this in a way you go. How about cross device, right? This is all great. You know, the, the initial feedback we got when this was all announced in May was like vendor lock in, all of these things. Cross device is actually the most critical, in my opinion, to piece of this story, right? The ability to actually use a credential that's on your Android phone, on your iPhone, on Windows on another Mac, on Chrome, on Ubuntu, right, is super critical to the solution. And so we, you know, in the FIDO Alliance, a protocol was created, um, and it, it enables the cross-device authentication flow that allows cross-device, cross-ecosystem FIDO authentication, right? So just like you can take a security key and plug it into another device, you can use a phone almost as a security key on another device, but without plugging it in, right? It's all magic. Um, and the idea is that, you know, we don't necessarily want the user to have to take their phone out of their pocket every time. That's not the end state. What we want you to be able to do is say, hey, okay, um, I have a passkey on my Android phone. I want to sign in to PayPal on my Windows machine. So I do the cross-device flow once. PayPal then prompts me and says, hey, enroll Windows Hello. Now I have a passkey on both. And now I can continue using Windows Hello from then on out. Right, so it's a very, this is actually a very, it'll be an interesting short period where you just have to bootstrap each other and then you have a credential in all your ecosystems and away you go, right? And you don't need that ever again on Windows. Um, you can still choose to use your phone if you want. You don't have to enroll Windows low. You can cancel the prompt. Um, but we imagine most users are not gonna wanna be pulling their phone out of their pocket constantly. So the way this would work, uh, what, I, you know, what I just described is you would access the site. Um, so let's you know, use PayPal again. Um, you'd use the mobile device to sign in. You do an initial pairing. Um, so you've probably seen the QR code um, experience. I want to de-emphasize the QR code a little bit. Uh, in theory, you should only need to do that once. We're in a bit of an interim state as all the platforms are rolling this out where you need to, do need to use the QR code every time on some platforms. The end state is that you just link the devices together and then you don't need the QR code again for the relationship between those devices, right? So that's kind of, unfortunately that ends up in all the demos, but. Um, the QR code is the least important. We, this is not QR-based authentication, like you know, the, the press seems to harp on QR codes. Um, and it is not Bluetooth-based authentication, right? There is Bluetooth involved, but none of the, the actual FIDO assertion does not travel over Bluetooth, it's very secure. And at that point, as I mentioned, the relying party could prompt you to enroll the local device. This, oh, the timer is working now, 12 minutes, okay. Um, so let, what about high value and consumer and enterprise? Um, you know, these, these pass keys sync, right? They're tied to a consumer cloud account. What about these regulated organizations? What about journalists, executives, influencers, and just traditional enterprise privileged access? Um, this is where the device public key that I mentioned earlier comes into play. So this is an extension to WebAuthn, um, and it is implemented by the platform authenticator. And it is a per relying party device bound key that is provided in addition to the pass key. It is not an authentication credential on on, on its own, it has to be paired up with a passkey, and it is used for like risk analysis. So you can say, hey, this passkey is being presented from a new device. Maybe I need to proof up the user using some other method. Uh, and from that time, from that point out, uh, if you see that same DPK on the same device, you you have some level of trust with that device and that user on that device. So we think that's 
that brings the best parts of passkey and the best parts of single device passkey somewhere in the middle for organizations that require it. So a, a quick visual of what this would look like, right? So I have a credential in the cloud, Tim at example.com. It syncs down to all my devices, uh, laptop, tablet, phone. And I go to login.example.com. Login.example.com would request this DPK. It's uh, essentially the, the RP ops into it. And at that point, if the platform supports it, they will essentially generate a device public key on that device and send it with, you know, there's essentially two signatures. You get a signature from the pass key and a signature from the DPK. And the same thing would happen across all of these devices. And you'll notice the blue key is the same, but the green, red, and purple keys are different per device. So as I mentioned, we, we believe this is a, a nice balance between all of the benefits of pass keys, but also providing um, the security options needed for many organizations, both on the consumer and enterprise side. So to wrap up, just to give us 10 minutes, and we know this is super fast, and so we'll be around for questions, but 10 minutes after wrapping up, we can do some questions. Um, the, the, the four major takeaways, right? We, we truly believe this is a drop-in replacement for passwords, right? If you are using passwords with any form of out-of-band OTP, this is irrefutably better than what you're doing today. It is fish-resistant, and phishing is the number one problem on the web today. It is cross-platform and cross-ecosystem. It is a friendly and familiar UX and it, there is an option for higher security use cases. I see pictures, so I'm gonna pause. Okay, uh, quick plug for, uh, Christian's gonna do an in-depth uh, demo of the new Android capabilities that were announced last week, and a plug for passkeys.dev, which went live yesterday. Um, that is a community-driven effort. Uh, please contribute, it's on GitHub, PRs are welcome, and there's also a Twitter community um, that just re retweets WebAuthn, passkey, and FIDO-related stuff which is mostly me and Matt retweeting, so please join. <laughs> and we have nine minutes for questions, which is more than I thought we were gonna have. Excellent, thanks guys. I guess so, I, I'll put that back up. So, uh, <laughs> oh, Thank you. Um, I just would like to know if the, if the cross-platform mechanism through, through QR code, you see it as the end solution, or if we should foresee with time, uh, some kind of solution for roaming between between clouds, between backends, so that you enroll and, and then somehow it... Uh, yeah, um, I, I will only speak for Microsoft. We are not overly interested in getting into syncing between platform providers. Uh, there's just different security models, different security expectations, different security statements. For example, we can't make a security statement on behalf of Google and Android. Um, so the solution we believe is eventually, just like we have pluggable password managers on a platform, you would be able to choose to use a pluggable passkey provider that would then sync to all of your devices, right? So we do see that that idea that you can choose your own provider isn't going away. It's just it's just coming later. So that's how you would solve that. So I've got a few online questions. Um, one is like a three-parter. Um, so I'm going to cherry pick from what's there. Uh, what if you want to sell your computer to someone you don't know? How do you remove the saved passkey? So the pass when you wipe your laptop, just like all of the other data, it's wiped off that device. So, so the, the answer is wipe your laptop. Right. Just like, well, <laughs> just like, a, sing, like, just like a, a Windows Hello credential today, when you wipe your laptop, everything's blown away. Someone else in the room? Uh, how does a reliant party verify the station of a passkey? So each, each authenticator can decide whether they provide attestations. The attestation format for a passkey, if it's provided, is no different than a WebAuthn attestation. Today. So for example, I'm a relying party. I want to know if this passkey is from Android or from Microsoft. Uh, how do I do that? If that platform is providing an attestation, you can validate it the same way as today. OK, thanks. Yeah, so, and I just, like, we didn't have a dedicated slide, right? Passkeys is a, you can think of it as a new implementation of FIDO2 and WebAuthn. Like, there's very few changes to the specs. The changes to the specs were to enable some of these new experiences to help users, but like, it's Fido, Fido 2 and WebAuth then almost vanilla all the way through. For enterprise use cases, you mentioned DPK. Do you have a relative timeline, days, weeks, months, years, or unknown away? Uh, Android, Google has publicly stated they have DPK support in the beta. Microsoft still provides single device passkeys, so the DPK isn't necessary. We will have single device, we will have DPKs when passkeys go live. I can't speak for any other vendors. When passkeys go live. When passkeys go live. Okay, I'll take another one here from, um, here it says, uh, as a relying party, 
what should we do to implement DPK as it is, and is it in production ready as now? So as a relying party, uh, what should we do to implement DPK? That's a loaded question for right here. Um, so it is an extension. It is new. It is in the draft specification. It will probably be in the first public review draft. It is stable. I'm looking at other WebAuthn people in the room. We're not making any other significant changes to it. Um, I would say the best thing you can do is start testing with Android as that is now available in beta. Someone else from the audience here? Yeah. So you said the UX was inspired by password managers. Uh, where do you see password managers fitting into the early story of passkey role? Yeah, so, so um, the, the question about how do you, um, how does this work actually have the same passkey in multiple providers, that's where we see third party passkey providers, right? We can rename password manager to passkey provider. That's where we see password managers fitting in, right? This is the, the first release is, is a platform feature, uh, and we want to, the, the goal of day one is, you know, the, the goal of this solution is to make it as seamless as password managers, right? We, we will get to a point where we can offer. Uh, passkey providers just like a password manager to plug into the operating systems. Um, it's a little easier to do on operating systems that already have an autofill surface on the platform, right? Desktop operating systems, for example, are a lot harder to do autofill. Um, they don't have the same app model, um, but we will get there. And uh, it is it is a you know it is something we believe in at, across the board. Yeah. So here's an interesting one from online. How will low vision person? How will a low vision person know which passkey to select and when to input their biometric? Good yeah, usability so question. Yeah, we're doing lots of usability testing right now. Um, and there are really a lot of important things to think through. Um, but yeah, conceptually, we thought about this from the very beginning to make sure your screen readers um, are organizing that correctly. But the idea is that because the credential is um, bound to the RP, it should be pretty seamless. I mean, you, you sign into whatever RP, and then you don't have to do anything other than that. You just use your, your biometric verification, you're signed in. So the user doesn't have to choose a different passkey, um, unless they have multiple passkeys, and then screen readers, um, system native screen readers will take care of that if they want to use a separate credential. And there's research being done, I believe, by all three platforms, as well as FIDO independently on accessibility for all of this as well, and that's in progress. So I, I was going through the passkeys.dev, right? And we, we don't, it's mentioned that uh, we don't support passkey attestation. Will micro, Microsoft support it? I, I can't say that right now, unfortunately, in front of a room in public. <laughs> okay. um, trying to pick through here. Um, here's a, uh, oh, where'd it go? Here's an easy one. How, uh, what is the expected average time for a customer to enroll in Passkey for the first time? Like a user, I assume, or a customer as in Let's like assume deploying user. a user? Well, uh, I assumed user, not not relying party. Okay, yeah. So if you if you've seen the video um, on passkeys.dev, it's on the homepage. There's a video that Christian from Google and I did um, that kind of shows an end to end flow across ecosystems for enrolling, starting with a password and upgrading to a passkey. If 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 you if you prompt the user right after you do a password, let's say, and prompt them to enroll, it can literally be about 10 seconds. Um, I'll do a plug. I didn't ask them for permission, so maybe I shouldn't. But Kayak has already rolled out passkey support with iOS. I just go create an account with a random email address and see how fast it is. It's like seven seconds to create an account uh, with ne never accruing a password. Um, and let's say, let's add five seconds if you had a password and we're upgrading because it's literally enter the password, hit submit, biometric prompt, you're in, right? It's that fast. So when you were talking about uh, the other platforms, you're talking about Apple and iCloud, you said that there are synchronization mechanisms. Microsoft, for example, isn't interested in getting into that game and communicating. Your example with Windows Hello was to first sign in once and then make a Windows Hello key. Sure. In that scenario, is there an actual mechanism that's provided in this ecosystem for doing that handoff, or are we just really thinking of it as a hey, once you're logged in, go ahead and roll a new device like we currently do with multiple physical keys. So, so are, you, are you asking, like, does the platform help with that, or is it something a relying party has to do? Is that what you mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it is actually, the answer is no, it's something the relying party does. Um, it's something a relying party would code. But it is very similar to the pattern that exists today if you support security keys and then you enroll the platform. It's exactly the same as okay. that flow. Um, just the difference, we have some, 
we added some bits to WebAuth then that would allow you to know as the relying party that this is a syncable or non-syncable credential. And you would also know whether that credential came from a remote device or the local device. Okay, so, so when and if uh, DPK is fully supported by Microsoft at some future point, sure. it will still be a separate cred credential. Like, it, it, you can think of it as like wrapping the passkey, right? It, it's, it's, it's not designed to be used on its own. It's a device-bound cryptographic signal that this is the same device that presented the passkey last time. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, but I meant like the one that's on your iCloud keychain and the one that's on Windows Hello. Oh, yeah, sorry. So the, the device that is the authenticator, so if I'm using my phone to sign into Windows, the, yeah. uh, let's say and my Android phone to sign into Windows, the DPK comes from the Android phone because that's the authenticator. Thank you. All right, we're at time. Um, thank you again, Scott and Tim. Um, again, if there's more questions, you can see what they look like. I hope you took pictures. Um, please grab them in the hall. We have more passkey type presentations coming up. Uh, the next one starts in about uh, four or five minutes. So thank you very much, everyone. Right, thank you.